It's the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal of positive football history. And welcome to Tuesday, footballarchaeology.com day. We have Timothy P. Brown, the founder of footballarchaeology.com, joining us as he does each and every week to talk about one of his famous tidbits. Tim, welcome back to the Pig Pen. Darren, good to see you. See your smiling face. It is about time. About time. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, about great time. segue. Your your segue uh, <laughs> isms are getting better and better I'm each up, and every yeah, time. I, I'm up. I am upping segue game. <laughs> you got, the dad jokes are a flying. <laughs> that's for sure. But Tim, now that you set it up, uh, you have a, an interesting article from back in September that maybe back in September didn't mean as much as it does this time of year as we're getting closer to the winter season uh sun going down and how it affected the timing of games and uh, i'll let you take it from there and uh tell us all about your tidbit yeah so actually uh the interesting thing is there was a uh I, I will just say an 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 unidentified reader I can't say who that is unless the reader gave permission to. The, the to reader gives you permission, it. Tim. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. So one time Darren asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always me? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, so just in the, you know, it's like anything else. You know, you question, you're going like, how, how did this work? So um, as he's doing his own research on, on, on some things, he, you know, kept on seeing in, in the old newspapers of, of the, you know, 1800s and early, you know, 1900s, it, it, oftentimes the box score would have a little thing right at the bottom of the box score that said, you know, time of halves or time of quarters, and it would say 15 minutes, 15 and 10 or something like that. And so, and and then typically if there was a short quarter or a short half, it was the second half. So, you know, the question is basically, well, why the heck did they do that? Why did they shorten games? And so sometimes that happened because one team was getting blown out, but that was not generally the reason. You know, so even in tight games, it wasn't unusual to shorten shorten a quarter or a half. And so, um, so you know, when I when I wrote it, I kind of used the, you know, the old terminology of de jure versus de facto. So. De jure means, you know, by the rule or by the law, um, whereas de facto is in practice, right? And so it, when football first started, when we first, you know, brought it in, from, you know, when we were playing rugby, football was just one of those stew of games that came out of, you know, 18th century England. And the norm was to play 45-minute halves. And so soccer still plays 45-minute halves. And rugby still plays 45-minute halves. And when football got started here, we were playing 45-minute halves, even though there was nothing in the rules that said that's how long it was. You know, the, the the original football rules don't mention how long a game is supposed to last, but everybody knew it's 45 minutes a half, so that's what you did. Um, but then football kind of, you know, as partly safety measures, you know, they were trying to give people rest and, and just reduce the amount of time that they're on the field. They, you know, football started, it went to 45 minutes and then 35 and then 30 minutes per half. So um, now another tradition that uh, was quite common was that a lot of times games started at like two o'clock or two 30 in the afternoon. And so part of that was, you know, you had a lot of people, you know, fans who, you know, 
if they were factory people, they, um, and, you know, clerks and whatnot, they, they work six days a week as did their bosses. And, um, if they were rural folks, well, farm chores have to be done. You know, if you got a dairy herd, well, guess what you're doing every day. You know, so, so just from a lifestyle standpoint, a lot of people had things to, to do in the morning. And then on top of that, um, a lot of teams didn't have the budget to send their team to an away game and stay overnight. So, you know, they would want to be able to take the train the morning of the game, show up, play the game, turn around and get home. And so not only did that mean they had to schedule the game a little bit later, but then there were times where they needed to, you know, the only way they were to get home and make their connections that night was to be at the train station at, you know, 430 and or, you know, five o'clock or whatever it was. So, you know, for a combination of reasons, they ended up, um, they needed to cut games short. And, you know, eventually the the rule makers, um, you know, it was kind of a, it was a, kind of an understood thing. It wasn't, uh, again, it's one of those traditions. It was, you know, in fact, people cut games short, even though the rules didn't say, you know, didn't allow it, but everybody did it, right? So, um, so then we end up in a situation where, um, you know, during World War One, the government instituted light savings time, daylight saving, no S on that, daylight saving time. And um, so that came into effect in 1918. And so that was the first time that anybody had experienced that, at least, you know, in the U.S. So you just kind of put yourself, I mean, we know what happens when daylight saving kicks in. But they just didn't anticipate it. You know? <laughs> so there were teams that showed up at practice on Monday afternoon, the right after daylight saving kicked in for the first time. And it was dark, you know. And you know, so it's just one of those things where, um, you know, and then obviously that applied on Saturdays too, because, you know, it gets dark on game day just as much as it does on practice. Um but you know, and I in the the tidbit, there's a you know discussion of like, I think USC and somebody you know playing in a game, and it's just like nobody could see by the end of the game. It was just it was so dark, um, and it's it's one of those things you know we take for granted that everybody's going to have lights. Well, guess what? Very few places had lights, and if they did, it was jerry rigged. Like I know Navy use like naval searchlights to light up the field, <laughs> you know, for for practice, you know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so you, you have examples like that. Um, and that's, that's when, um, I mean, some people had used them earlier, like, um, but like painted white balls and yellow balls that came in right around Yeah, that they re- really became popular around that time. That's when you start seeing them showing up in sporting goods catalogs. Um, and it's really, you know, like if, I go, you know, it's one of these things like depending on where you have lived in, in the U.S., if you have not moved around a fair amount, you don't realize how much where you are in the time zone from an east, west and north, south standpoint. You don't realize how much impact that can have on how dark it gets early. So like Chicago is right on the east side of the central time zone. So it's like it's getting dark where it's like I'm in Detroit. So, you know, still across the state. Uh, but if you're on the West side of Michigan, you know, it's light in the summer. It's light until, you know, 10, 10 o'clock, you know, and be, you know, beyond. Whereas like, it's the same thing in Chicago, but it's nine o'clock. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> So, um, so anyway, so I mean, it's just one of those things you just, and if you're Northern, you know, then it, it's great in summer, but then it gets darker early if you're further up north because that whole sun, you know, the earth rotates and it tilts and da da da. So, anyways, it's just one of those things you don't think about, but like uh, daylight saving was a big story in 1918. So, but, and then because of that, in 1922, then they formalized the rule that said at halftime the referee can approach the the two team captains and ask if they want to shorten the halves and then 
you know, then they they'll do so as needed. And whether whether that's because of the lighting or the uh, one team getting blown out or whatever, um, you know, basically they, they had the they had the chance to do that. Yeah, it's just so, uh, th- thank God that the uh, the football didn't adopt the what soccer does now with uh, you, know, you have the two forty five minute halves and. Then we're gonna just gonna arbitrarily throw some time on at the end, you know, just uh, and not tell anybody, you know, how much time's left. Just you know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that, that drives yeah, me crazy. Time, I, yeah. I, <laughs> it drives me nuts, you know, that they don't uh, have that public with how much time is going on there. But yeah, very interesting stuff, Tim. And I'm I'm glad you I mean you really cleared up uh, mine because I kept seeing this. You know, you'd have like a a 25 minute first half and you know something like 10 minutes for the second half. I'm like going. Why are they doing that? You know, you have like a, you know, a, a 13 to nothing game, you know, it's still, still a ball game, you know, and it's, yeah. it's just driving me crazy. So I'm glad you could clear that up for me and the listeners. So that's, that's great. So, yeah. Again, just, it's one of those things you just don't even think about. Uh, Cause you know, basically there's very few people living today who went, if there's anybody, you know, that, that uh, experienced that, you know, when daylight saved me first, first showed up. So. Yeah, yeah, crazy. And there's, and there's and probably more people see live games under the lights, uh, you know, at your local high school than you do, you know, in the daytime yeah. anyway nowadays. So we're so used to the lights, it's taken for granted, I guess. So. Yeah. But Tim, you have uh, interesting items like this each and every day on your tidbits, and you know, people really love reading them. And uh, maybe there's some listeners out there that aren't familiar with how to. Uh, reach uh, you and, and get a hold of your tidbits and maybe you could help them out with uh, some information. Yeah. So uh, easiest and best thing is just hit my uh, website, footballarchaeology.com. Um, in order to find it, you got to put the www in front of it. Um, and then, you know, you can, every, you know, every story gives you the opportunity to subscribe. You can subscribe for free. And uh, then as a result, you'll get an email every night into your inbox um and you know some people p- let them pile up i know every monday morning i get a bunch of hits on my site because people who send them to their work address um you know don't look at them until monday morning <laughs> so um so anyways uh and then you can also uh you can follow me on on twitter on threads or simply you know or follow me uh within the um within the substack app and so kind of whichever flavor works for you, um, have at it. All right. Well, he is Timothy P. Brown, uh, footballarchaeology.com. The links uh, to Tim's site and to the tidbit are in the show notes of this podcast. If you want to enjoy that, uh, you know, the, the images and some of the, the great writing that Tim does there and some of his other tidbits, you have links to get to it that way too. So Tim, thanks a lot for joining us again for, and sharing. And uh, we will talk to you again next week. Very good. Thank you, Darren. We're taking a peek over at the chains and the down marker. It's fourth and long. We're going to have to punt the ball and get on out of here, but we'll have another series tomorrow for your football history headlines, so be sure to tune in. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleat Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. Pigskindispatch.com is a proud affiliate of the Sports History Network, the headquarters of sports yesteryear.